All right. Let's coffee up. Live and dead. I am your host, Daniel Crozier, and I am joined by the amazing Ryan Atkins and Jennifer Goodman. Oh, hey guys, how are you doing? Good, hey, how are you? Being here. Good. Sorry, things are moving a little slow on my end. Uh, but uh, yeah, Ryan, Jennifer, it's great to have you on. Uh, can't wait to talk about uh, you know, your new film, The Unseen. But mm -hmm. uh, for people that are unfamiliar with your work, tell us a little bit about yourself, You know where you came from, how you got into filmmaking. Uh, Jennifer, can, can we talk? Uh, start with you? Sure. Yeah, you know, I have been an actress most of my life. Um, that's kind of how I broke into the industry. A lot of my work was on stage. I did some film in college, um, but I really didn't set sail until I moved back to Chicago. And um, I met Ryan when I was auditioning for his small script and he cast me as the lead for a women empowerment show. And I offered to expand it with my crazy ideas and we were able to collaborate and build what is known as Conrad series with autistic um, a character on the autism spectrum who I played authentically on the spectrum and things flourished from there and grew exponentially. And we got Harry Lennox and Eric Roberts and Hisham Tawfiq and just excited and been continuing since. <laughs> wow. That's, that's so cool. Yeah. Ryan, uh, what, what was it like, uh, you know, for you starting out and then getting to work with Jennifer? Well, um, when I started out, it was almost nearly 20 years ago. I'll keep I'll keep the sarcasm out of this conversation. I usually use 80 years ago to get a laugh out of people because it seems that way. But um, he's Benjamin Button, you guys. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I I'm told I really don't age, but the the internal say otherwise. Um, I definitely right. don't necessarily feel like I'm 13 anymore. But um, no, I, I actually started in television with the video production. I've done a lot of narrative. So I've been doing this stuff for a, a long while. But uh, 2016, I decided to basically do my own version of a, I want to do a scene for my, my, um, uh, my demo reel, which now is a, another service offering that we offer called a demo scene. But um, I had cast Jenny. I had written a script kind of um, inspired by a lot of different female uh, strong female supporting or led movies. Just I was going on a big movie watching binge, I guess you could say. And uh, uh, she was one that I cast. And I wanted to turn the tables and have a female detective interrogating a male suspect, which is kind of, you know, it's opposite of what maybe you might otherwise um, see on, on television and movies. And um, she initially asked me if there's any more to the character, any more to the story. We started collaborating and uh, before he knew it, she, uh, I offered to, you know, give her full range of the script. She had these ideas just oozing out and, um, long story short, along came Conrad. It, it, it developed into a TV pilot because of all the story that we had available to it. And that turned into, uh, I think it's what three seasons of a Bible. And so the pilot is just a, a breadcrumb of, of what, that initial relationship started out as so it, it's been a great time and the unseen just an extension of what we continue want to continue doing that's that's awesome yeah yeah you know going to uh the unseen 
as you did, uh, Ryan. Uh, yeah, can you tell us a little bit about uh, yeah, how uh, this uh, film project uh, came to fruition? Sure. So um, as we were in the pitching process for Conrad, um, we, we knew and internally I wanted to do something different. And when you go to film festivals and things of that nature, they always you're always asked a question. When I say they, a lot of people, so what else do you got going for you? And it's always good to have something in your back pocket. And so right. I wanted to do something different. I've, I've, I was a, I gotten into horror and thriller movies probably in the last 15 years. I wasn't always a fan of them. I was always just scared to death. I, okay. I guess I, you know, I, 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 I got grown up a little bit. And so I, I grew a fascination for them. And uh, Jennifer was into the thriller part of it. And I think she, I think she grew a, a deeper appreciation for the horror aspect. Um, Maybe her, maybe her her opinion of that has changed since, but I, I'm not sure. But um, that's kind of where the end scene came from. We kind of combined a lot of different inspirations, and uh, you know, it's it's not just a story of blood and guts. Let me tell you that much. It's it's a more meaty story than maybe your average horror film. It's not just a horror film. It does have a lot of horror elements in it. But uh, that's basically how this, how the film came about. We wanted to do something different. The feature film was the, basically the next best step for us to do um i had done a lot of shorts before and so you need to graduate to a feature just like after high school you often go to college um that was right. the next place to graduate to and um we learned all kinds of ways to basically engineer it for profitability so that's where we cool. are right now that that's that's awesome uh yeah jennifer you're the writer of uh of the film right i am Nice. How uh, so? How did you uh, you know put together the script? It was was the 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 story was did it come uh, between you know you and Ryan or or was it all you know all you Jennifer? You know how did that come about? Yeah, that's a great question. So originally, um, so I wrote Conrad, which is you know more of a crime drama, and I started talking to Ryan. Well, first of all, we had a conversation with Netflix. And they were really moved by our mission statement that we elevate unheard voices and tell stories untold. And they asked us what else was done. And one of the questions was, you know, a feature. And of yeah. course, you know, being Jenny that I am, who's quick to just respond, I was like, oh yeah, we're working on this psychological thriller. And Ryan's looking at me like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I'm like oh yeah. So I hang up the phone, I go, guess what we're doing? A psychological thriller and he goes do you write that i go i do now and he's like oh <laughs> so you know it to full disclosure here and i, I bet netflix is going to watch this and be like what because you know we we have a great relationship with the lady we work with and um you know i was always planning on writing more but i was leaning towards the crime drama the thriller mm -hmm. and i love the whodunit type of stories yeah. um the undoing the unseen Okay, yep. but um, you know, I just I love stories that make you think. I love stories that have, you know, a really strong, um, you know, story on a very macro global level that brings okay. dynamics and interpersonal relationships on a micro level. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, for me, when I write, I like a lot of things where you're taken on one journey and then you're whipped to another. I find those to be the most fascinating. So when I wrote this, a lot of what I had was the story. I utilized relationships that I've had, toxicity and dynamics mm. that I've had, or, you know, growing up in the North Shore, having parents that, you know, are, are, are you know, succumb to the environment where, you know, your name is everything. And, you know, I grew up where, people were affluent and your name is based on the successes you've had. And so bringing yeah. in those storylines and that struggle, like I've had with my parents, my parents are wonderful people, but for me, I've always been trying to garner my mother's approval. And so I took that kind of story mm -hmm. and brought it into Tommy having that development, you know, with his father, right? I have a great relationship with my father. My mother's a lot of fun. But it's been harder because I'm kind of like a mini Joni, my mother. 
And, you know, there's always this kind of competition or what she was when she was my age. and I'm not that. And it's like, am I good enough? And, right. you know, she doesn't say you're not good enough. But there is a sense of, of that strict, you know, relationship that I, t- I tethered into this. Um, the other thing that I brought in was, you know, people misunderstandings, bullying, not really having a grasp on a person's choices and why they make those choices. A lot of the times we do things for approval or we do things because we feel like not only will people like us, but we won't be singled out or people won't push us away or reject us or our own families. You know, we are our families, right? Like whether we want to admit it or not, you are the environment you grow up in, whether it's good, bad, it doesn't matter. And really cultivating that with trying to build a sense of self, which is something that I've been working on for many years in therapy, I was able to bring in a very strong story about a young guy who has a great heart and a great soul, but makes decisions based on what he feels he's supposed to do or the pressure he receives from his family. Mm -hmm. And that kind of, you know, parallel with what I've experienced, coupled with Ryan's ideas of this horror, which you know, listen, I didn't grow up loving blood guts. I know all you horror fan of fanatics are sitting there going, who the hell are you? I know, but I love it now. Okay, but here's the thing. My brother used to scare me with all that, you know, Damon and, and and you know, uh, mm-hmm. what was it? Chucky, Chucky. You know, like yeah, you know, okay. child's play. Yep. But those are psychological thrillers and like exorcism and things like that. So I brought in mm-hmm. a lot of that bone chilling couldn't mm. happen is it true versus you know that horror and so you know one of you know several of our producers had ideas regarding some horror things and i was like nails on a chalkboard no 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 like they wanted to do oh, it. i was like i can't <laughs> write that i can't write that so you know i brought yeah. in more of the blood i brought in more of the torture um mm. And coupled with some ideas that were brought to the table, I was able to bring, you know, the psychological thrill with the horror element and really bring yeah. a pretty cool piece together. That's wow. That's that's awesome. That's that's it's quite the journey. It sounds like it's quite the personal journey too uh, for yourself, Jennifer. Not as deep as what Tommy goes through, um, but right. you know, and my my relationship, with, my parents' relationship with each other is lovely. So I brought in a little bit of, you know, more drama to kind of elevate it, you know, but there's a lot of story in there. There's domestic violence. There's, you know, a lot of things related to family and, you know, familial pressure and collective guilt, things that, you know, are really mind provoking. And that's what I like writing. Right. Yeah. You know, reading uh, like the synopsis, you know, or the tagline on on uh, IMDb, yeah, it's essentially about a, a murder mystery and, and this poor kid that that gets you know caught up in, in the the situation and uh, in some of the supernatural or you know psychological stuff that manifests around yes. it. Um, the uh, you know Ryan, you serve a number of roles, and of course Jennifer, you, you're a writer in this, and you're you're you also act in it. But, you know, Ryan, you know, you're mostly behind the scenes. I was you know, also serving. a producer. Oh, fantastic. Good, 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 good. I was Man, the main so you producer. Were the to do. Yeah, right. <laughs> that is that is awesome. You guys are wearing just so many multiple hats. So it, you, you, it's a lot of lot of juggling uh, to do, you know, to be executive producer, DP, Ryan, and then, you know, Jennifer writing, producing, acting as well. Um you know, what, what was that experience like? Was it just, you know, just a constant, you know, rush trying to fit, you know, get yeah, all these yeah. different talents, you know, to, uh, to kind of line up and, and be facilitated? You know, um, initially, if you're, if, if a filmmaker is not used to doing it, it can be really difficult, but mm. there's a lot of positions out there that are now requiring project management skill sets mm-hmm. and the way i like to think about it if you think about each uh each position as a project then you right. can kind of better manage 
how you're handling that position itself. And so especially when you come, um, so I have a large corporate video production background. And when you're a, um, the term video producer is often referred to someone who, you know, you go from concept to the screen. The screen is usually computer or phone. And you're doing yes. everything, monitoring all the, you know, you're, 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 you're shooting, you're, you're editing it, graphics. It, that's not, that's not um, um, subcontracted out to someone else. You are the person doing it. And so I think that training really did help me um, compartmentalize when I needed to. Now, it's not to say there was a, it was a walk in the park because it definitely was not, especially being on set. Um, there was just every project has its challenges and every project needs, um, you know, the team to rally at, at different points. But um, it was it was not not a challenge, but I, I learned so much from everything that we did do. Um, I tried to go into every project trying to learn something new, like how to do something yeah. better or what not to do. I have, ba I'm ba I could write a novel on everything that I have learned um, to do better or not to do and just, you know, things of that nature. So I don't think I would trade it for anything because the education I got from it on bettering myself professionally and personally is, um, is, is quite priceless. So it was, it was a challenge. Yes. But um, it helped us, maintain the vision and the tone yes. that we wanted to keep in the film itself. Cause I think if I, um, the DP, yes, they are in charge of camera department, but there's a lot of times when the studio or producers will trump that decision. And so when I can mm. be a producer, I can help kind of maintain the tone that we're trying to keep. Does that mean that I'm not going to be collaborative? No, no one wants to look with, work with a non-collaborative creative, but um, it does, uh, it does have its perks, but it also comes with its responsibility. So, nice, nice. Well, we're starting to get a few uh, comments coming in here. Of course, uh, okay. you know, we mentioned uh, uh, Angela, uh, you know, off off air, uh, but she's you know one of the, the people that uh, that uh, you know uh, has been helping you behind the scenes. Um, so she's you know coming by and saying hello, and then uh, Amber uh, as well, um, but. Uh, yeah, Angela's uh, also mentioned that um, looks like uh, I have been working with uh, Ryan and Jen for a couple of years now on on the Unseen movie, and I cannot wait to see the final project. So you know, yeah. I um, I love Angela. I really do. Um, she's just she's just a wonderful lady, and I cannot wait to show her and everyone else as well. So thank you, Angela. Nice. Yeah. yeah. And, Oh, sorry. I was just going to say, Angela has been... Oh, you're fine. Oh, go ahead, Jennifer. I'm sorry. Oh, no. I was just going to say, Angela's been an incredible support. We feel very lucky to have had her on board for the past few years. She's enthusiasm. Cool. She's joy. She's, she's, her spirit is positive, and it's really good to have people like that. That's that's awesome. It, you know, she she has nothing but uh, positive things to, to say, uh, you know, to you guys or about you guys. Uh, yeah, Lakefront Pictures is an outstanding production company. Thank, Thank you, Angela. Really appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, she has uh, no shortage of uh, you know words. I love you both. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. That that's cool. It, it sounds like you guys got a pretty close knit, uh, you know, family with, with the production, uh, you know, you know, for this film, uh, is, yeah. Has it always been, you know, pretty easy or, you know, real, yeah. Everybody focused on the, on the group effort. I mean, it's, it's, um, if we're talking about like when we were, you know, creating the project, when we were in production, it, you yeah. kind of create that family atmosphere. You're, you're working with these people for at least 12 hours a day. You're not just right. going on your 15 minute coffee break and that's it. You're, you're heck you, you, you gotta, you gotta like them at some point. You're gonna have to keep on working right. with them. So, and, and the, the biggest thing is like when you hire the film industry is all about, is a lot about chemistry. It really is. So when you hire yeah. someone, um, they gotta be someone that you can work with. And then um, they have the skill sets that are necessary for the production. And, uh, you know, we, we tried really hard to bring in those folks. And so were there times of disagreement? Yeah, of course. And did we have to, you know, go to the director? Okay, so he has this option. This is my idea. What do you think is the best? You know, 
every leader has right. has to work with that. And I was even delivered those options as well as the leader of camera departments. So, but I would say that we definitely established a family atmosphere, and I think together as a team, we 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 really killed it. Pun intended. That's awesome. <laughs> that's that's awesome. That's very appropriate for you know a horror movie. And it's like yeah, you totally killed it. <laughs> Uh, wanted to bring up uh, the movie poster. Obviously, you guys have you know fantastic backgrounds, yeah. uh, but uh, show the yeah the posters so everybody knows what they're going to be looking for here. Um, come on now, uh, just a second. As there we go, it's refreshing. Uh, there we go. It's, it's here. Come on, pop up. Waiting for it to pop up on my end here. There it is. Okay. Um, cool. So, yeah, uh, this is quite the, you know, a nice grabbing image, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, yeah, I can't wait for, for people to, to see this in, in the movie theaters. Uh, it's going to be in limited release, right? In uh, Coming uh, June 30th, I believe. Yes. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Oh, that's and, and then, of course, it'll be available on video on demand, you know, for those, uh, you know, that, that need to stay at home for, for any reason. Um, let's see here. But uh, <laughs> ignore that girl. Uh, sorry, I'm reading your private chat out loud, uh, Jennifer. <laughs> uh, it caught me up, uh, a little off guard. Um, but, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's uh, that's the movie poster, and of course, you know the the star of the film is uh, one of my favorites from from Breaking Bad, uh, R.J. Uh, Mitt. Am I saying his Mitty. last name right? R.J. Mitty. Mitty. Okay, I've been mispronouncing it for all these years. Damn it. Uh, uh, but uh, what was it like to work with R.J.? R.J. is incredible. Um, so first of all, as an actress, I worked really well with him as my brother. We would get on Zooms and we had a lot of like rehearsals and chatting about our characters. And then, you know, he's just an easygoing guy. Um, you know, yeah. he, he gets really into his character and he really is a, first of all, he's able to bring waterworks, which is incredible. Um, nice. You know, I like, he learned a lot on Breaking Bad and he was able to bring a lot of that insight to us. Um, there were a couple of days where I was on set producing and, you know, just kind of watching him in the, in, you know, on the, on the monitor. And I was just amazed at the work that he did. Um, we had stunts, we had actors who were like nervous about some of the stunts. And he's like, it's all good. If you want me to do this, I'll do this. And you know, there's a part where, um, you know, he, he flies out of bed and you know, we had the harness and the stunts team. And you know, we're, mm. you know, I went up, you know, cause I was always with the actors cause you know, it's, I'm the producer who brought people in. I need to make sure they're safe. Yeah. So I'm like, Arjun, are you sure you're good? He's like, I got this, man. I'm doing it. I'm like, all right. Nice. I was like, nice. got it. <laughs> but um, that's so cool. It, it was, you know, he's he's a very easygoing guy. He makes everyone feel comfortable. Um, you know, he just does his thing, and you know, he's super chill about it. So yeah, it was it was nice. It was a breath of fresh air. Nice. Oh, that's that's awesome. Uh, and, and you also had uh, Christian Stolt. Uh, am I got it? Am I, I'm mispronouncing everybody's I, name. I feel I, Christian yeah. Stolt, Mitty Stolte. No, it's funny because Christian. Um, so I was working with his agent for some of the other characters, and my yeah. team was like, "We need to get another person who's got a name." And I was like, "Oh, I got this." I'm gonna email the agent, and they were like, "Are you sure?" I'm like, "Oh yeah, I got this." So I emailed the agent. And she's like, "Oh my god, he'd love to do this." He read the script. Cool. He liked it. We had, a, we had a conversation. It went well. You know, for me, nice. I, I, I told him, I said, sometimes I don't always know how I come across. Just communicate it. And he's like, you're just doing your thing. Just, you know, be yourself. And he just, he came he came to set. He did his thing. And he was, he cool. and RJ had some really intense scenes. So it was really cool. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's, that's awesome. Um, I, I think it's probably uh, a good time uh, to uh, roll out the trailer. And uh, you yeah. know, bring that on. Um, let me uh, take off the the banners here and, uh, and stuff, yeah. and get that uh, cleared off. Seems to be taking a while on my end, anyway. I don't know what it, what it looks like on on your end. There you go. 
Um, so yeah, let's let's get this in, into the stream here, and we'll go to that, and then um, oh come on now, that's not what I clicked on. <laughs> there we go. All right, let's get this playing for all the people at home. I graduate law school in two weeks. How do we define who's at fault? Tommy. Are you with us, Tommy? Yeah. Sorry. I'm sure you must feel some pressure having your dad as the guest lecturer. How's your job search going? Maybe this will help. You're Dan Olson's son. With his recommendation, you could work anywhere. Okay. I prefer to follow my own path. Leave me alone, Dad. I'm hiring you on to help with our workload. I'll need you to start taking assignments. Low pay, long hours. Mm -hmm. Could be a good place for a new hire to show initiative. Do you think you can handle the pressure? Tommy, are you listening to me? I've, I've been having these nightmares. Tommy! Oh, they, they feel so, so real. And I, I'm seeing things. This is your fault. Should we be worried? This job is having a negative impact on your mental and physical health. So now you'll do whatever it takes to be successful. This job takes a toll. I can't treat you. Tell me where you're going to be. The truth is complicated. You having a bad day? Hi. I'm not okay. Oh, that looks so good, guys. That looks absolutely amazing. Uh, you know, congratulations. Thank, Thank you. you. We, we um, you know, after we wrapped, you know, it really, the project became me and Ryan's to, to do. You know, everyone's work on set is done. And so yeah. Ryan and I had to literally figure out how to get, you know, all this stuff done. And, you know, finding the incredible distributors was really a fun experience. And they were able to really help us get this thing to a place of incredible horror. And so, you know, we went to the American film market and Ryan and I, you know, so for me, I've been in sales for over 10 years, 15 years. And I always blame it on my autism and people are like, don't say that, but it's true. I am not afraid to ask what I want which scares people Whoa. because I guess people don't ask the way I do, but I, I mean, I raise money, I get shit done. Like, nice. and so I was like, let's just go and knock on doors. And Ryan's like, you know, we had documents and papers and Ryan's like, do we just walk in? I'm like, hell yeah, we walk in, you know? So we walked in, I'm like, excuse me. I'm like, I just wanted to introduce myself, tell you about the unseen with RJ Mitty. Do you have a few moments? It's a horror that you won't want to miss. And they're like, uh, not sure. You know, and so it's like, you know, it really serves me because I don't really have yeah. the fear. The worst thing they say now is no. That, that, but, but that's great. You know, so many, yeah. uh, you know, creative people just, just don't have that, that sense of, you know, confidence. You know, you, you might I blame it on. Being, uh, I don't realize how I can. I'm just kind of like. But it gets, it gets the job done. It's effective. Uh, yeah. so yeah, yeah, D definitely don't apologize for that. You guys are, in, you know, in a good place be because of it. Right. Yeah. Cool. Indeed. That, yeah. Man, that's, that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, I can't wait to, to, to see this movie and it's, yeah, it's, it's been a while since I've seen, you know, RJ, uh, you know, yeah. On the, on the big screen, let alone, you know, I'm used to seeing them every week on Breaking Bad, you know. Of course, <laughs> of course. But uh, man, uh, so uh, are you guys going to be doing uh, the red carpet premiere? Is that uh, you know in in play? Yes, yeah, so we have our film festival coming up. Um, I believe we have several cast members coming. Uh, me and Ryan and Vince will be there, and 
some of our cast, and we're super excited about it. And then we yes. have a premiere in Chicago, and we're really excited about the June yes. 30th release. Cool. That's cool. That was going to be my next question is, you know, where you guys going to have a, you know, a Chicago premiere is, is the, the main premiere going to be you know, in, in the West coast or, you know, what, what's the, or not. Gravitas is putting on a premiere in Chicago. We actually are um, opening up in New York, LA and Chicago on the 30th. So we are having our own premiere with cast crew and press and we're very excited. And then we have the big festival, which will be really cool. So yeah, we're nice. super excited. Uh, can I ask what festival that is? Absolutely. It's called Dances with Films. Nice, nice. And this is a film festival that, that you guys produce or you're just participating oh, no, 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 in no. it? As we just it. Oh, okay, okay, okay. All right, cool. I completely misunderstood. Um, yeah. Uh, wow, that's that's pretty awesome. Um, yeah, Angela's yeah, popped in and, and said, so creepy cool. She loves the trailer. Um, yeah, Thank you. Man, Thank you. Uh, we actually were the top on iTunes and we're in the top eight. We've actually been getting so many hits for that. Good, 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 good. That's, that's so cool. Um, yes, Angela's yeah, right. This is a midnight show in LA. You should come. Oh, nice. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, when, when is this a uh, screening? So the premiere, the world premiere is on June 23rd at midnight. 11.45. June 23rd. Nice. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, we'll have to see about that. Um, yeah, man, that's, I, I'm really excited for you, know, for you guys. It sounds like it's it's going to be an absolute blast. Uh, I can't wait to, for the rest of the world to see it. I know I can't wait to see it uh, as well. But, uh, you know, um, when it comes out, you know, in, in the limited theatrical uh, run that it's it's got, are you guys going to be able to go and enjoy it? Uh, you know, join in on some of the screenings to see what the fan reactions are. Yeah, I know. We, I think. I mean, Ryan, I'm, I'm going to check them out. I'm sure we'll see the other ones. Yeah, I, I think I, I think I probably will as well. Um, it's always cool. interesting to see the different folks that come and just uh, see what everyone's reaction is to, you know. Yeah. As an audience member, I think we take it for granted all the hard work, but an audience, you know, they, they just, they, they watch a movie, but that's kind of, we sign up for that. We, we know how much it takes to put that, to put it on the screen, but um, it's always interesting to see the reaction from, um, from a piece of art. So. Right. Right. Most definitely. I, I, you know, w when it comes to like film, you know, like any other piece of art, you know, it's, the process isn't done until, you know, you're participating with the audience and right. it becomes that dialogue, that, uh, that conversation. Right. Um, and I think for like, especially with film, I mean, the same way is, is definitely true with, with music and of course, fine art, but you know, with, with film and, and pop culture, I mean, that, that, that uh, process just keeps going on and on oh, yeah. and on for years and years. Oh, yeah. So, uh, so yeah, I, I think that's just a uh, an amazing uh, you know thing to to participate in you know as the creators as as well right. as uh, you know with the audience and and fans. So man, my hats off to you because making film is some of the hardest things you can do. You know, working with all these different talents and and uh, you know kind of orchestrating that. It, it's it's that it, it's not just working with people. It's it's just just so many gears to manage in the film yeah. itself, both large and small. Yeah. And uh, it's like a mother multiplying her two kids by like fifty, and they're all <laughs> going at different levels, wanting to do different things, and just right. it is. It's a lot to manage, but um, at the end, you have this final cohesive piece that we all gather in community to watch. And so that's the, that's what makes any of the challenges not matter anymore. So. Right. That's why right. we do that. Uh, after this, uh, you know, long vacation, at least a week. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> I need like a year. <laughs> producing is, you know right. what? Producing is tough. It really is. Yeah. It's, it's one of those things where, you know, realistically there's a lot that goes into it people don't realize on a producer level producers are the most hated 
You know why? Because you can't make everyone happy. Like I'm looking at, I work for the investors. I work for the budget. Mm -hmm. And then I've right. got crew. Like you won't pay for my parking, but you took RJ to dinner. Well, yes, because that was part of my negotiation with his agent that we were going to take care of their talent. Sorry, yeah. but that was part of the deal. And my budgets are shown to all my investors. So they know exactly where the money's going. They know how it's spent. We use accounting firms. We use bookkeepers. Like you don't mess up the books. And I'm, I was, you know, with autism, I'm so meticulous. So like if somebody was like, oh, like for example, my UPM would say to me, hey, we need to, we, we, we're out of breakfast and we need like another 200. I'd be like, no, 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 we, we got to figure something out because, because if I take 200, then we're going to take that from the, the gaffer and he's not going to have money. They're like, Jen, calm down. I'm like, they're going to hate me. They're like, that's just, you know, so it's, it's, it's one of those things that essentially is a job of a producer to not care what anyone thinks. And all you care about is making a film and making sure the money's spent correctly. It well, is it, 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 like me. So it, 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 you know, I have to say the producer's got to do what's best for the film itself. Um, yeah. The producer has to take care of everyone as best as they possibly can. And that's right. that's the job of, of the producer. Um, and it's not always easy. It really isn't. Um, you make one person happy and two people aren't happy with the decision or, you know, whatever the case might be. But um, in the end, the producer is trying to get the project created, um, you right. know, made and put out to whatever platform it's going to go on. So it's, um, it's, you know, it's, it's, we make movies to, you know, get away to, right. to, to, a, to a different land, I guess. So it's, um, it's all worth it in the end. Yeah. Yeah, most definitely. Yeah, I think a lot of people out there just, you know, don't realize, you know, what what the producer role is, you know, and it's, it's really is to, to get this project made, you know, from from, you know, inception you know to completion. You know, what's funny. I had somebody say to me on set, they were I don't want to say, you know, but they were newer in the industry. And they said, mm -hmm. you must love your job because you get to tell people what to do. And I was like, that's why I hate my job. Because yeah. it's not about controlling anybody. It's about saving my booty from the investor. <laughs> you know, here's the thing. <laughs> you ask somebody for $50,000, hundreds of thousands of dollars, and you need to be able to show them that not only can you spend it, but you get them return. You know, everyone right. says, oh, I'm going to make a great movie, and Netflix is going to pick it up. And, oh, and I'm like, guys, unless you have a name, unless you have a relationship, unless there's a return and investment, it's an ROI. Right. It's a business. You know, they always say there's no business like show business. It's mm -hmm. true. Everyone's right. creative. Everyone has the best idea in America. Believe me, I get it. I hear great ideas left and right. There are so many terrible shows on Netflix right now. Let's be honest, right? That it's not about the creativity, which is so unfortunate for us creatives mm -hmm. because we want to be creative. So then there's yeah. me who comes in and is like, I got to check the balance of this. I got to do this. And sure. I, I kind of don't know how to like let go. Well, I, I will say that the, oh. the challenge is when you first start as a filmmaker, it's all about the art. It really is. You need yeah. to know how to express yourself. But then with the business side of it, it's how to create, how to make money from your art. And that's where you do have to make those hard decisions. And it's a matter of channeling the creative into how to make that profitable. And that's what, that that's the learning curve. Yeah, most definitely. You know, having art meet commerce. It, it's exactly. always you know exactly. uh, it's it's definitely a tough thing, but uh it's you know, that's why you surround yourself with uh you know great talent. Hundred uh, percent that gets you there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, that's, that's awesome. Uh so we've just got a few uh few minutes left. Uh but uh you know, real quick, uh you know, as as fans of a uh, of film, and I know, you know, Ryan, you mentioned that uh, you're just getting into horror, like, you know, within the last 15 years or so, um, you know, what out there, you know, obviously everybody out there, you know, go see the unseen when it comes out in the, on the 30th of this month. Order God. Pre -order. Yeah. Download the pre-order guys. Yes. 99 flash yes. sale tomorrow through the weekend. Yes. And, uh, you know, but Ryan, uh, as as a you know filmmaker and fan, you know what what else would you recommend to people that you, you've been enjoying? Oh gosh, I mean, I 
honestly, I haven't had a lot of time to watch newer movies, but um, the one that I did get a chance to watch was Smile. I really enjoyed that film. Ooh, nice. Smile was excellent. Um, really loved every every bit of it. Um, I do know that the final installment of Insidious is coming out from Blumhouse and James Wan. So that's also what I'm yeah. looking out for. So it's, it's good to watch content as a filmmaker because you need to know kind of, you need to get a temperature read of like what's out there and are you, are you too old for, you know, did this, or do you need to expand yourself? Do you need to, to evolve? Right. Do you need to learn some new things? And and like, um, is this now scary to you? Like what's inspiring to you? And I don't want to say like too old, but like, do you need to evolve? I guess is what I'm going for here. Um, but um, yeah, so I think uh, I, would, I definitely recommend Smile. And then um, I'm always a big um, Insidious fan. So the next installment's coming out. And yeah, actually there is a, on Fangoria, there, uh, the, um, one of the editors made a, like a summer watching list of, of her most favorite um, co- uh, two, you know, coming soon horror films. And the unseen is there with insidious and then a bunch of other great titles. And so um, we're really looking forward to it um, coming to fruition and coming to screens and people to watch it. That's awesome. Uh, how about you, Jennifer? Gosh, you know, there's a lot of scary or horror movies. Um, you know, I'm, I definitely haven't seen Smile yet. Um, I definitely need to watch that during the day. <laughs> um, but <laughs> I know. Um, I don't understand. It, it's, a ner- it's delightfully unnerving. <laughs> yeah. I feel like it's like Girl Interrupted or, um, hmm. but you know, um, there, no, there's definitely a lot of good ones that I'm excited to see. And I'm looking nice. forward to, you know, adding more to the arsenal. I'm working on my next project. Um, I'm writing a script for it's called Beneath the Surface. So, you know, there's there's more to come. Nice. That's awesome. Uh, Ryan, are you uh, helping uh, Jennifer out on that one, too? Yeah, I mean, I, I've I've offered some ideas for story. Um, I will be the film cinematographer. Um, I will also help produce where my uh, skill uh, skill sets best fit. Um there's a lot of different kinds of producing that you can do in a film, but uh, short answer is yes. Um, but that yes. currently in development, and we're looking forward to the next one. That's awesome. It seems like this is like the perfect collaboration between uh, the two of you. And, yeah. uh, you know, I, uh, I, I wish you guys well to, to good fortune with, uh, you know, your, your uh, future endeavors, especially with unseen. I can't wait to see it. Um, and, uh, yeah, uh, I, I I love being a fan of uh, you know people I've met and uh, in their work. I think it's you know it's wonderful to have you know such a you know creative community out there. And we appreciate the world. your support a lot. We really do. Thank you. Yeah, no, appreciate it, uh, guys. Uh, thanks for being so generous with your time and you know talking about your art and and uh, you know all the cool things that uh, you're working on. And of course, for everybody out there. Make sure you you hop online and uh, you know get the pre-sale correct of uh, yes. of the unseen and uh, you know for for those of you on uh, in New York, LA, uh, is it Chicago? Is that you know that where it's going to be in theaters as well? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, make sure go see it out in the theaters. Support your local theater. You know, uh, you know keep keep that tradition alive. But uh, yeah, guys, yeah, thanks so much for being uh, generous again with your time and coming on to the show. Uh, if you could you know, stick around for a few minutes while we sign off. But uh, yeah, it's been great talking to you guys. Thank you so much for having me. You. you too. Yes, thank, thanks, Ryan. Thanks, Jennifer. And uh, of course, uh, to our sponsors, uh, you know, thanks for uh, supporting uh, Kofo Live and Undead to Mutiny Information Cafe. If you're going to, start a revolution make sure you drink a lot of coffee oh my god i am screwing everything up tonight i love it uh to hellfire entertainment uh thanks so much for uh you know rebroadcasting us on your social media and of course to mute uh, mutiny to groovy tv uh you know thanks so much for your support there guys and of course to uh angela joseph and uh bill arunkin uh 
you know, thanks for, uh, you know, supporting what we do here. And uh, to our producers, uh, Lily Fisher, Amanda Armstrong, and Stephen Santa Cruz. Thanks so much, guys. Uh, to everybody out there, have a good night. Take care. Look out for each other and stay spooky. And we'll talk.